What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who classic review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the fifth Doctor Peter Davison story, Mordrin Undead. This is the first story of the Black Guardian trilogy. Um, I have seen this one before, but a long time ago, and I pretty much don't remember anything about it. So this is basically a first time viewing, I suppose you can call it, because yeah, literally watched this one. Didn't really have much memory of it beforehand, but especially after watching it, I don't, I, like nothing's just popped up in my memory from it. So yeah, that pretty much tells me that I didn't remember anything of this story. So it is really a first time watch. Um, but yeah, this is also the introduction to Turlo, um, the new companion for this one. So um, that's pretty cool as well. But anyway, this is Mordron Undead by Peter Grimwade. Turlo may look like a normal pupil at a boy's boarding school, but he's actually an alien from another planet. And when the menacing Black Guardian asks him to kill the Doctor in return for a trip home, the boy quickly agrees. By coincidence, Turlo's maths teacher is an old friend of the Time Lords, but why doesn't the Brigadier remember that? The Doctor, along with his friends Tegan and Nyssa, is about to find out. So a pretty brief little thing on the back of the DVD there. Um, some interesting stuff going on, you know, Turlo being made to kill the Doctor, um, the Brigadier making his return. Um, just a lot of stuff going on in this one, so let's get started with the cast. Okay, so Peter Davison as the fifth Doctor. Um, yeah, he's pretty good in this one actually, I do quite like him. Um, the fifth Doctor is a bit weird for me because sometimes I do really like him, you know, especially in like Keizer and Jazani and stuff like that. In some of his best stories he's really good, but in some of his mediocre and more kind of bland, boring stories, he's just not very captivating. Um, he's a little bit... He's a little bit boring sometimes. I think in this one though, he, he he's not absolutely phenomenal, but he's not bad either. He just kind of comes in as, yeah, he's pretty good in this one. Um, not too much to really say about him, you know, as in specific moments or anything like that, things he says. But um, yeah, Peter Davison, he's perfectly fine in this one as the fifth Doctor. Um, for our companions, we've got Sarah Sutton as Nyssa, who is good in this one, decent amount to do. I I say this quite a lot with Nyssa because, um, you know, of how much she's doing, because a lot of the time she does kind of get pushed to the sidelines, but she has a reasonably, reasonably decent amount to do in this one. I'd still say probably not as much as Tegan and... Yeah, I mean, Turlo is even more of a main focus in this one, so out of the three companions, she's probably the most shoved to the side again, but um, she does have a decent amount to do here. Janet Fielding is Tegan Javanka. Uh, yeah, she's good. Once again, Tegan's not my favourite companion. I know it's one of those companions you either love or you hate her. I mean, I don't hate her, but she's not my favourite companion in the world. She does come off a bit annoying. She's just kind of fine in this one, though. She doesn't get on my nerves like she does sometimes. Um... But she's just not exactly a standout for me either. And then Mark Strickson as Turlo. We'll just call him Turlo. His name's actually Vizsla Turlo, but we just call him Turlo. Um, yeah, of course, this is Turlo's first story, his introduction story. And I think he's I think he's pretty good here. Um, yeah, I mean, I was pretty surprised at the start when he had such a... Um, such a very kind of posh British British accent at the start, but then when we realise that he's actually he's not even human, he's just kind of putting on that accent because he doesn't sound like that normally from what I've seen of him. Um, I was yeah, I was kind of a bit confused at the start of that, but when I understood what it was about, I was like, okay, that makes sense, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's good in this one. He kind of takes the main role almost in this story, so um, yeah, very good stuff from him. All right, so on to the good and the bad, starting with the good. Introduction to Turlo, and he, and he's kind of the villain. Um, yeah, so this is Turlo's first story. Um, I think this is a really cool way to introduce a new companion. Um, he's just, he just doesn't know the Doctor at all to start with, but he, uh, this Black Guardian comes from somewhere. We don't quite know where this Black Guardian comes from, who he really even is, to be honest. Um, and I don't actually think the Doctor knows about him yet. Whether that, whether he, um, you know, figures it out. I'm guessing towards the end of the Black Guardian trilogy. He'll understand who you know. Who you know, figure out that the Black Guardian's here and all this sort of stuff. Um, but at the moment, even at the end of this one, he doesn't seem to know that the Black Guardian is really a part of this at all. Um, to, I don't even think he knows. He realizes that Turlo's trying to kill him in this one. You know, he takes him on board the TARDIS at the end, but I don't think he realizes that he tried to kill him. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but I don't. I think I'm pretty sure that was the case. Uh, but yeah, it's. I think it's interesting. You know. A character, this being an alien character, you know, we're well, kind of just stuck on Earth, I suppose, um, but looks like a human and everything. Um, and he just wants to get off Earth, he doesn't want to be here anymore. So this Black Guardian gives him the opportunity to get away back home or wherever he wants to go um, that's not on Earth, but he has to do this deed for him first, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, he's good. Well, there's nothing really else I can say about it. The Brigadier's return. Really, really cool to see the Brigadier coming back. Um, Nicholas Courtney's amazing. I actually didn't mention him in the cast, but yeah, of course, Nicholas Courtney. He's always amazing. Such a good character. Just a nice, nice to see him pop in here and there. Of course, a big part of the Third Doctor era and a fairly decent part of the Fourth Doctor's first series and the start of his second series. Um, but I believe his last appearance was in Terror of the Zygons, um, which was the start of series season 13. Um, and this is his, I believe, his f uh, first reappearance since then. And I think he'd only come back once after this in um, uh, in Battlefield, is it, I think, with the Seventh Doctor. Um, yeah, so it's really awesome to see the Brigadier back. Um, yeah, the fact that in this one his mind gets wiped. Now, did I miss anything or did we really figure out why he got his mi mind wiped? Um, I can't really, I think it was... Um, I think it was when he went into that spaceship um, and he got left behind or whatever happened to him. I'm pretty sure that that's what it was. I'm pretty sure that's why like the people on the spaceship when he got stuck on there, they um, they wiped his mind or whatever. I'm fairly sure that's what that was, but I don't I, don't quote me on that one. But I think it was cool, you know, um, him not knowing who the Doctor was. Of course, the Doctor's regenerated since he last saw him, so that's a different thing as well that he's got to deal with. Um, yeah, once again, Brigadier, very, very good, he always is. Um, the Doctor mentioning old companions to the Brigadier when he was trying to, you know, um, figure out, like, trying to jog the Brigadier's memory to get his memory back. He was, you know, saying, what about, um, oh, who did he, who did he mention? I know he mentioned Liz, um, Joe Grant, Sarah Jane, Harry, um, Sergeant Benson, you know, all these unit characters and companions that the Brigadier has seen. He starts mentioning all those. I just really think it's cool. And then you have that uh, pretty cool little um, kind of montage of moments that the Brigadier's been through. So you've got like, you know, the Web of Fear with the Yeti. You've got the Cybermen, the Invasion. You've got, oh, I don't know, like the Silurians. The I don't think they showed all these, but like the Silurians, the, um, the Autons, the Zygons the robot from robot you've got all these this really cool montage and you just you see each doctor as well that he's seen the first four doctors it's a really cool montage it's just a really cool scene all together and then his memory eventually comes back again um so yeah i think that's that's pretty cool the switches between 1977 and 1983 now doctor who is a show all about time travel and space travel um but time travel is a pretty big focus with it now i like how they initially go to 1977 um, but then Tegan and, no, is it Te Tegan and, Tegan and Nyssa end up in 1977, the Doctor ends up in 1983, um, which 1983 at the time was the current time when this episode aired, um, and I really think it's cool in Doctor Who when, of course, a lot of the time they're traveling in time, because it's Doctor Who, they're going to different points in time. Um, you go into the past, they're going to the future. But I like it when in a single episode, they have moments of time travel in the episode, and especially how it's like simultaneous, you know, you see Tegan and Nyssa in 1983, uh, 1977, you see the Doctor and the Brigadier in 1983. I think it's just a really cool little thing to see what's going on, see the same places, but in different times, what's going on and stuff like that. I just think that's really cool when they do stuff like that, so I liked that. Um, and then finally, Tegan and Nyssa contaminated with the Mordrin aging virus kind of thing, you know, all the Mordrin dead people, the Mordrin undead, we'll just call them that, the Mordrin undead, um, they, I mean, they're basically undead, they've kind of got this horrible virus and they're dying and, yeah, um, and they just want to die, in the end, the whole thing is that, in the end, they actually just want to die, they wanted the doctor to give up his regenerations like kill them off because they can't just be killed normally this is the only way they could be killed off um and i thought that was that was pretty cool a pretty interesting a little thing to do but in the end he doesn't even have to do that anyway it kind of resolves itself and it, we figure out that you know the doctor doesn't need to use up all his regeneration cycles which is good because it would have been pretty much the end of the show if that did happen um but yeah nissa and tegan getting contaminated with that virus i think is cool because it means that they then when they're in the tardis they can't travel back or forward in time they travel forward in time and they start doing this aging and then they tra try and travel back in time again um, and they turn into like kids and I think that's a really cool little scene there um, and yeah just just a cool thing to kind of keep them grounded in that one place and uh, just add a bit more tension 
All right, so for the bad, not really a whole lot to say here, to be honest. Um, Mordrin and his kind look a little bit silly, I think. I mean, I think the makeup design's pretty cool. It's not amazing, but it's it's pretty decent. It's just kind of this horrible, manky old person with some kind of weird radioactive disease or something, you know? Kind of pretty disgusting, but fairly well done. I think the costumes are a bit, a bit weird, a bit silly. You know, they're kind of these pink, frolicky costumes. They look a bit ridiculous. There was like one scene where they were all walking down a hallway and kind of they kind of walked to the left of the camera, walked past the camera as they went past. And I just thought it was a bit of a weird, they just looked a bit weird, I don't know. So, I mean, I don't mind them, um, but it is a bit strange. Um, I also like how they're not really the bad guys here um, because, you know, yes, they wanted the doctor to use up all these regenerations to kill them. But in a way, they, they didn't want to harm anyone else, really. I mean, they kind of threatened Nyssa and Tegan with the contamination thing. But um, they weren't necessarily the bad guys, but then they kind of were at the same time. I don't know, it's a bit, it's a bit weird, but um, yeah. Oh, I just realised as well, it was the Brigadier, wasn't it, the reason why um, when the Brigadiers like, touched each other, the two Brigadiers, that's why everything went to shit and the Mordrin all died. I remember now. Maybe a bit of a... Bit of a clunky resolution there, perhaps. Yeah, maybe could have been done a bit better. It kind of felt a bit, okay, that's a little bit convenient. Um, but yeah, there's nothing really else bad I have to say about this one. It's a good episode. Um, doesn't have much bad about it, but it also just isn't one of those massively captivating ones. Um, but yeah. All right, so a rating for Mordrin on Dead. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. I think it is actually a decent story. It's a, it's a fairly enjoyable watch. Not too slow at times. There was one episode I'm not sure if it was actually episode one or two. It might have even been. It might have been episode one, um, when it was a little bit slow at times. But after that, after we kind of saw Mordrin and all that sort of stuff, I um, I kind I got quite invested in it. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, and yeah, I really did quite enjoy this one. It wasn't a, a massive standout. Definitely isn't a classic. But it's not a flop either. It's it's one that I can just sit down and enjoy. So yeah, an 8 out of 10 for Mordrin Undead. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Go into the description and follow me on Twitter. And I'll see you guys in the next video.